No? So this is our mind. Is, the parents is just only the, like a mother is we call Buddhist is like a soil. Father is like a farmer who plant the seed. The seed is a separate, your own karmic, your own karma is your seed. So parents is like a farmer and soil produce this, germinate the seed. Yeah. So in this way, we consider mother's womb, uh, this uh, uh, consciousness. Then out of consciousness, we start this aggregate comes up. Five, uh, like a uh, form, we call the name in the form, it's like a five aggregate. Uh, f f five aggregate is a form aggregate, uh, feeling aggregate, uh, mental perception aggregate, uh, uh, consciousness aggregate. So now you think about these parents may have uh, twins. Uh, and then these twins, you treat, give the same cloth, same treatment, same school, do everything same, but they're totally going to be different. Why it makes the differences? No, if you think it's a karma again, the state of the mind, mind is a, both is a physical is identical, but mind is totally separate. So because it's totally separate mind, there's so many similarity there, similarity there, but there's a, emotionally there are differences. You know? So that's the reason it's a form in the, uh, like a human, it takes nine up to the ten months to completely form these five aggregates. So once we completely form five aggregates in the mother's womb, then we call the coming air. Coming air comes to mother's womb, the coming air push the baby. No? We say give a labor, but actually karma is need of another element, strong air element you need in your body that push baby and then take birth. We just think it's a just natural, but actually it's not natural, it's a karmic natural, like push. Then we start to born. The moment we born, now we have this life experience. Like when we born, it's like a, we say contact. So now we see our consciousness and object. When we first contact, out of that we get feeling. Feeling is not separate. When we see some object, immediately we feel good. We see some object, immediately feel uncomfortable. We see something, feel no differences. That feeling comes. So feeling is not just independency. How you see, that brings your feeling. No? So that kind of feeling. And then after your feeling, it brings like a craving. No? Craving is, oh, I really like it, I want more about it. Or I dislike it, I don't want it. That kind of craving, craving comes. So when you have a, cra a craving, then you're clinging. So I really like, I want to keep it. I don't really want, I want to throw this out. This clinging comes out. So when you have a clinging, now you're becoming, like now you're sick of that, you create the karma now. So this karma is now you're doing for next life. So while you're doing, you're going to die. Yeah? When you die, your physical die, whatever you did is not die. So then you rebirth again next life. So that's a, how it takes the next life. And then when you're born next life, again do everything same. So that's a, if you know about interdependent origination, then like a, uh, everything has a cause, its own result. So whatever be happening, we should not blame our parents. Lots of people blame my parents. Because the parents is not our coming responsibility. So our coming responsibility is ourself. You know? So in this way, like a, if you're not looking logically way, if you look in emotional way, we may be upset our parents because they treat me badly or they're not going to give me what other kids have in their life. So much judgmental. It's a, it's not my fault, you know, for when you complain. It's an innocence. We think that way. Because when we don't have understanding of karma, when we don't have understanding of really how process, processing of the life. If you really study of all this karmic kind of a system, then you're going to stop criticizing others. All has a reason. No? All have a reason. Uh, within the reason, uh, kind of uh, you create the systems. No? So that's how it works. So then you're going to stop blaming to other. You see the real what makes the problem. Also, not to blame ourselves like this morning. When you found out uh, all this trouble, what you have is uh, your previous negative karma, you don't be upset with that. That's not going to make you any good. 
just simply say I did mistake now it's time to make a correct you know so that mind makes you fix the problem just upset it makes you more negative more you negative it makes you more negative than positive so this whenever you find something mistake about you don't be, try not to upset just simply recognize this is a mistake I need to correct it yeah, that's the best solution so this is kind of a uh, uh, overcome the ignorance mind. If you know the cause and effect, then ignorance is not going to be there. And once you're not there, then your mind brings back to the focus. Yeah, second one. And then third is like an anger mind. Yeah, now, anger is like a uh, again it's very destructive. This is a anger is such a powerful. The, the, there's so many non-virtues. Among them, the most powerful non-virtues is the anger mind. When you have anger, this says you don't need to create the karma. Just anger alone enough makes you unhappy. You don't need to do anything. Just anger alone does make you unhappy. Yeah. So this again distracts your meditation. So overcome that one. Then what we need to do is like in everyday life, when you not meditate, like a practice loving kindness, practice compassion. The most sophisticated antidote to overcome anger is like a patience. If you really train the patience, then nothing makes you anger. So how to develop patience? I mentioned yesterday, you need to be wisdom. Wisdom expect of patience. No kind of a suppress expect of patience. They're not going to work. No? Say, oh, for instance, the weather's hot, or I'm going to be, uh, try best not to criticize. You know? They're not going to help you because they keep hot, you know, then you're going to criticize the weather. Instead of that, just accept this is summer coming up. You know? This is the nature. Can't do anything. You know? If I'm cold, jump into the water. If it's a cold, just switch on the fan. If it's too, cold, hot, too hot, you just uh, 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 switch on air conditioning. If you. So there's so many methods you can cool down. It's no point to uh, criticize the weather. It you know, makes you cooling down, instead it makes you more heat up. You know? So that's not the reason. So just simply accept. That's the reality. So when you accept, it will not make you upset. So when you not get upset, you're not going to get anchored to the weather. You know? so that's how we call the patience. Yeah? So similarly, you can apply any situation. Every situation, anything that makes you upset, it's a human nature. We don't want to, that to happen, we get upset. But then you look at the real condition, it's different. So when you really I can understand the real condition, then much easier to accept. When you accept, it not let you upset. Yeah? When you not get upset, you're not going to be angry. So when there's no anger, then your mind is much easier to bring back and concentrate. So that's uh, how to overcome the anger mind. Yeah? Then the fourth is like a judge's mind. Like a, uh, because someone having you nicer than me, whatever kind of economic uh, knowledge, position, uh, fame, uh, reputation, it's not logical to jealous that person because that person not taking things from you. Because that person created his or her own cause having these great qualities. So just accept that. If you're not jealous for that because you don't have what he or she got, then you just learn from him. You know, if you learn from him or her, you may get something what he or she got. Because everything is a result of the cause. So if you create this cause, there's no reason you're not going to get the same as the other one. It may take longer, you know. So in this way, if you understand of the nature, you're not going to get jealous. So when you're not get jealous, then your mind not get distracted. So in that way, you bring your mind back to the focus. Yeah? That's the fourth one. And then the fifth one is like a ego mind. Like a, sometimes when we meditate, we may think I uh, do much better than next to a uh, person who's sitting me. You know, kind of a, you know, sometimes I did much more meditation period time than others. They can ego rise. So soon ego rise, it distracts your meditation. So that time, you have to remember the three realms. I'm in the desire realm. Compared to the form realm, I'm not better. I'm worse than them, you know? If you're in the form realm, you don't think I'm the best. The form lesser is better than me. 
If you're in the form left room, you don't think it's on, on best. The enlightenment is much better than them. When you reach enlightenment, they have no happy ego. No? They don't have ego at all. So in this way, always look someone that's better than you and help you to subdue your ego mind. Yeah? Uh, Sakya Pandita says, like, uh, best way to feel secure yourself, you just think it's a way humble yourself. If you're humble, then never going to fall down. If you think it's important, very easy to fall down. Yeah? For instance, when you climb a ladder, ladder, if you fell the first step, it's a small pain. If you fell from the third one, even much more painful. You know? So more you develop ego, there's more risk you get. So in this way, you develop the humbleness. So once you're humble, then it brings your mind back to the concentrate. That's the third, fourth, fifth there. Yeah? Fit overcome. Now, sixth one is a discursive thought. Means I mentioned this morning, like uh, 18 different thoughts. Means like uh, all sorts of thoughts. There's no one specific there. Sometimes it goes to say, I want to driving. Next minute, says, I'm going to kind of uh, uh, what call that? Serving, you know. Another minute, you think I'm going to parachuting, you know. <laughs> the next minute, says, I'm going to kayaking, you know. Then next thing is I'm climbing a mountain, all everywhere. So this is a very busy mind, you know, constant change. I used to have one friend living with me in the Rosal. He's a very kind of nice guy. He go to watch a movie. Wherever he watch a movie, come home, say, oh, I want to be that one today. You know, he watched something movie, say, oh, I want to be ambulance driver, you know. Then we could go to another movie, say, oh, I want to be army, you know. He had no kind of a set money, you know. Every movie he watched, he wanted to be that one, you know. <laughs> so that's what we call the discursive, unperceived thought. So to overcome that, then we call the breathing meditation. So breathing is a principle for that, like a, just simply concentrate on your breathing. Nothing else let come in your mind, so that quiets your thought down. Yeah? So the breathing is like a preliminary to the single-pointed meditation. Breathing is not the main part of meditation. Some meditators, they, they talk about breathing is a single uh, man, but actually not man. It's a preliminary. Like a, uh, it's a help you to calm your mind down. So when you calm your mind, then much easier to concentrate. So that's the breathing. So in this way, you need to apply this six antidote. When strong this six emotion comes, then it helps you to stop and bring your mind back to the focus. Yeah? Okay, so that's the uh, we completed uh, uh, Shamata instruction.